Welcome back, everyone, to another Kerbal Space Program adventure. Yes, we are back once again in Kerbal Space Program, not in space this week. And I'm following on from something I mentioned in the last Kerbal Space Program mission I did, in which I constructed a Mun base. And that was when I, spur of the moment, suggested that wouldn't it be great if we could use the new, well, if we used the new ground anchor piece to create a kind of spire base on Gilly. Gilly is a celestial body in Kerbal Space Program with very, very low surface gravity. So I pondered, what if we just put like this base on top of a really tall spindly tower and anchor the tower to the surface of Gilly so that it doesn't, you know, do doesn't fall over, but it shouldn't be too unstable because the surface gravity is so low. And today I'm going to make manifest that idea and build such a base. So here I am constructing the base. I'm not going to show the entire rocket assembly, but just the uh, the base itself because I think that's the uh, the only real interesting part of this build process. This is the tower here. There's a docking port at the bottom which will be useful for two things first of all it will allow us to dock it to the ground anchor that'll be on the ground and also it means that we could expand this later on it's not a particularly tall structure consider this a, uh, a proof of concept an idea come to fruition but you know could be built upon by people you know hopefully this inspires you possibly to make your own version of this base and maybe you know now i've kind of established that this works and it doesn't just freak out because the center of mass is so high etc etc so maybe i could try and do this sort of thing again somewhere like i don't know maybe build like a lighthouse off the coast of uh eve or lathe or kerbin or something like that so i don't know there's a potentially some there is potentially some potential here to this idea and this is pretty much the base like i say it's it's nothing special it's just uh you know, I, I guess what I just described, right? A big, tall, thin tower with a base on the top. And I added like a little antenna dish with a, a rotating piece and a hinge to sort of make it look a bit more sci-fi-ish. I don't know. <laughs> the uh, fuel and engine setup is a bit dumb. It's just easy, right? Just a load of liquid fuel and some nuclear engines. It gives us enough delta V to get from low carbon orbit all the way to uh, Gilly orbit and land. But to get to Gilly, we need to first wait until an EVE transfer window since Gilly is you know, a moon of Eve. And the transfer window to get to Eve is as follows. If you were to draw a line from Eve to the sun to Kerbin, the angle that line forms at the sun should be about 54 degrees. Uh, Eve needs to be behind Kerbin in this case, rather than most transfer windows in which uh, the planet you're trying to get to is ahead of Kerbin. Eve is the only one that's, uh, is the only exception to that rule. So there we go. I just uh, eyeball it. You could use a mod like Kerbal Alarm Clock or something like that, or, you know, transfer window planner if you want to do things properly. But I find eyeballing it works just as well most of the time. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I have departed from the uh, tracking station and have begun to launch the rocket, which is uh, nothing special, I suppose. Just a few of the big making history fuel tanks slapped together with five, no, six F1 engines, you know, the Mastodons on the bottom of the stack. And then we've got a Rhino uh, second stage and the upper stage, of course, you've already seen me build. It's that, class, that cluster of eight nuclear engines around the base. Sorry if I'm a bit nasally sounding, or you know, at the very least, a little bit more nasally than normal. Uh, I've still got a bit of a bunged up nose, don't worry, it's not COVID or anything, it's just a, it's just a regular old cold. Uh, so yeah, that's probably why my voice might sound a little bit more bunged up than it normally does. But yeah, look at that beautiful mod, by the way, that's the waterfall mod, the engine plume expanding as the ambient pre air pressure decreases. Uh, if you like the mod, then also maybe consider liking this video. What a segue. <laughs> uh, liking the video does really help support the channel though. So if you do like the video, then, you know, sincerely uh, like and a subscribe. Always very much appreciated. <laughs> anyway, we can slowly fade out that graphic and get back on to, I guess, talking about what's on screen, which is not a lot has changed, has it? It's just still doing the initial ascent, although we have, of course, ditched the first stage and we are well into our second stage burn. Uh, you can't really see the plume too well with the rhino, which is a shame, but I guess you can still hear it for now. Uh, yes, while the sound does actually work this time, in case any of you are following this uh, very uninteresting odyssey I'm currently undergoing, uh, I keep having problems with the uh, audio capture with Kerbal Space Program gameplay. My last two, I think, Kerbal Space Program videos have been without gameplay audio, so so far so good. This uh, rocket has audio, uh, but uh, that just disappears at some point, and then there won't be any more audio for the rest of the video. So enjoy it while it lasts, uh, but I guess we've been through the noisiest part of the mission in that we've done the ascent. The nuclear engines aren't the loudest things. And, you know, we, I usually add background music at these sorts of points, you know, to, uh, to well, I add the gameplay music back into the gameplay to make it more, I don't know, fun. 
Uh, so that I've still there's still some audio stimulus, and of course this magnificent train wreck of a commentary. You've got anyway launching out an Eve transfer window. As you can see, we can get one straight away and even counter. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that our periapsis passes on the opposite side of Eve from where it currently is, because we want to be going past Eve in the same direction that Gilly orbits. So from this specific angle we're at now, it will be going from left to right. So our Eve escape would be on the right, and our Eve entry would be on the left. Now you want your periapsis to be fairly close to Eve in order to save Delta V, so I'm not quite sure. I can't remember what I was trying to achieve uh, <laughs> with that trajectory. I think I was trying to demonstrate that we were going in the same direction as Gilly by passing along Gilly's orbit, and then my plan was to do a mid-course correction burn along the way. But I don't really know. Don't do this. Get your periapsis to be nice and close to Eve if you can. Try and make the uh, the inclination though as close to Gilly's inclination as possible. Uh, other than that, just try and get yourself nice and close to Eve. I always say at this point in the Eve mission especially, don't worry about getting it too accurately because you'll pretty much always need to do a mid-course correction burn anyway. So just try and get a nice, you know, just get yourself an Eve encounter and then we can do a mid-course correction to fine-tune it a little bit uh, as we approach the purple planet. But there is our, um, there we are, our orbital line now, you know, enters Eve's sphere of influence. So we can go ahead and create said mid-course correction burn. So we're going to create a maneuver node, focus on to Eve, and uh, I don't, uh, I'm really sorry guys, I forgot, I think I had some big, really exciting, epic point I was trying to make with this, I think I was trying to demonstrate that uh, if you were to circularize from an orbit uh, at the height of my current orbital line, uh, not the maneuver node line, then it would cost a lot more delta V than if I circularized from a point like this with a much lower periapsis. I think that was what I was going to do and then I didn't. I forgot. I don't really know. Don't worry about it, guys. We're just going to get it. This isn't a tutorial for getting to Gilly. I've done Gilly tutorials. Uh, just type into the YouTube search Matt Lown Low Tech to Gilly. That's my, that's my Gilly tutorial. This is me just playing Kerbal Space Program. Let's, let's go with that. So now I've got my Eve encounter adjusted with the maneuver node we can just go ahead and time warp 176 days and three hours into the future so we can execute that maneuver node burn which is only you know just shy of 50 meters per second so it doesn't really eat into our delta v budget too much i think i sort of allowed about a thousand meters per second of delta v to get our gilly encounter with an extra 200 ish 300 ish spare I, I can't remember i know i've only got i've only got a i've only got a slightly more delta v than what i needed for this mission so hopefully it goes well i mean spoiler alert obviously it does there you go by the way uh, i don't know if you caught that i overshot the maneuver node slightly so i went backwards using the rcs thrusters i got a lot of modern propellant on this ship so we can actually dock to the docking port on the surface of gilly that's it, actually. That's why we've got lots of monopropellant on this base. So here we are, setting up our Gilly encounter. So first of all, I'm going to create a retrograde burn at Periapsis to ensure that our Apoapsis just, just intersects Gilly's orbit. Uh, obviously, we don't need to go any lower than that because we're going to Gilly. So why, why would we, you know? Don't know why I even said that. We're going to make sure that our Apoapsis intersects Gilly's orbit. There we go. I, I think I got there in the end. Anyway, we're about to start the... Uh, the burn now so let's go ahead and do that three two one burn and uh, yes i think it's this point that there's no there's no sound anymore so apologies you're gonna have to use, use your imagination Just... oh. there we are there's me filling in for the engines don't worry i'm not gonna do that do you remember that video i did like three years ago wow how time flies where i uh, unlocked the entire ksp tech tree and i didn't have any audio for the engine so i just made them with my mouth blowing into a blue yeti microphone Good days. Anyway, Gilly has such low gravity that the O-Birth effect doesn't really even, you know, make much of a difference. So what I'm going to do is just get my orbital line to more or less match Gilly's orbit. That's what getting into orbit around a celestial body is. You just make your vessel have the same orbit as that planet or moon, and that, you know, is, is the right speed to orbit. And then we just need to make sure we're encountering it. Basically, consider getting a Gilly encounter to be more akin to orbital rendezvous with a ship rather than encountering a celestial body is probably the best way of looking at it so i just uh matched my made my orbit as close to gillies as possible using the maneuver node maker and from there messed around with the nodes a bit to get myself a gilly encounter which happens in a few orbits times so we can just clock wipe to that point and you know prepare. again this isn't a system tutorial obviously if this this has been far too incoherent and too much of a mess really to be considered anything close to a tutorial so yeah search up matt lown low tech to gilly uh, if you want to if you want a gilly tutorial this is just uh 
just this is just for funsies, you know. I've been a bit out of I'm a bit I'm a bit out of practice with Kerbal Space Program commentaries. You know, in the past like four months, I've done like four or five, I think. I don't I've no idea. <laughs> Kerbal Space Program videos in total. Whereas until then, for the past three or four years, I was doing a video every single week. So it's a bit of an adjustment to suddenly go back after being, being on a bit of a hiatus. Uh, what have I been doing on my hiatus? I'm glad you asked. Viewer, maybe someone, one of you, one of you asked. I've been doing lots of things. I've been going mountain biking quite a bit. I got big, I got big into mountain biking last year. I got a trail bike, uh, hardtail. You know, it's winter, so I'm using the hardtail to for a couple of reasons. Firstly, in winter, full suspension can just get so gummed up with mud and stuff, especially in the UK where we have really wet, muddy winters. Yeah, the bearings can get messed up. It's a massive faff to clean. So hardtail is about for winter. And you know, I'm still trying to sort of learn the ropes. You know, get used to a few things here and there, and hardtail is good for learning that sort of thing. And I, I do like cross country. I'm doing a lot of trail riding at the moment, but I do like cross country as well. And hardtails generally are better cross country bikes than full suspensions. There are exceptions to everything, but good all rounder, hardtail the way to go. I feel like this is only appealing to a very small uh, niche uh, subset of my viewership. So sorry for uh, going off on a tangent. What else have I been up to? I've been playing video games, not just Kerbal Space Program. I've been playing, I'm playing a lot of Descenders, which is a mountain biking game. So it's uh, it's something a little different, but kind of the same, you know. If you got that reference, you got that reference. And uh, I've been playing Arkham Knight. I started playing Arkham Knight in like 2016, and I hated it because of the Batmobile. Uh, I was the Ace Chemicals section where you have to use the Batmobile loads, and I was like, this sucks. So I stopped playing, but then I started playing again this year, and I'm like, okay, that part sucked, but afterwards, okay, the Batmobile is used loads, but you'd have to do any more weird Batmobile parkour puzzling, like you had to do in Ace Chemical, so it's a bit better. It's a really good game. It's probably the best Arkham game in the series, to be honest, and that's despite the Batmobile. It's um, it's a it's a mess, really. I don't know why they put tank battles in a Batman game. They really do ruin the entire game, but it's still a good game. And that was my review of Batman Arkham Knight, a six-year-old game, nearly seven-year-old game, I think, at this point. Anyway, as you can see, I've talked past every crucial point. We've got our engineer out on the surface of Gilly, and he's placed the ground anchor. We've added a docking port to the ground anchor, and I've sort of tried to level it out so it's as you know, vertical as possible. You've got to be really careful, though, with the engineer, because the ground anchor is so heavy that the engineer can't have a jetpack which is a shame because e Gilly's surface gravity is very, very low. So if you're not careful, the Kerbal might just walk into orbit. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. But if they walk too fast, they'll end up just floating up and just drifting off for miles. So just be very, very, very careful with that. And then it comes to the docking procedure, which is, uh, if you guys have seen my uh, Mun Arch base using a ground anchor, it wasn't quite as difficult as that, but it was still very fiddly. I've sped the footage up quite a bit, so you can save you guys some time. But yeah, it was a little bit tricky to get this accurate, but there we are, got there in the end. And then I'm just going to do my uh, slightly cheeky, rubbish way of getting rid of the engines. I'm just going to decouple them, and then I'm going to time warp and uh, let them just clip into the ground and explode. So, yeah, okay, kind of a uh, crap way of doing it. Technically a bit cheaty, but you know, it's easier. And then we can turn on all the lights, and wow, I've I've put way too many lights on the bottom of the tower. I'll sort that out, don't worry. Uh, but, you know, I guess they're kind of cool, right? Like if a ship is coming to visit, or if we're going to build the spire up to be taller, and we need to get another module near to the base, we can fire up those massive red lights on the top to create a giant, you know, blinking beacon of where the ship needs to land. But uh, I think for general use, it's a bit, it's a bit over, it's a bit over the top, isn't it? So we'll, we'll sort that out in just a second. First of all, I'm going to just strut the. Why was that so difficult to say? Just strut the base to the docking port on the ground, just to make things a bit more secure. I don't know if it really makes a meaningful difference, but it feels like it should. So that's why I did it. And then we could deploy the antenna. First of all, we could you know de deploy them, and then we can start up the cal controller that makes them. Do the little movement that I programmed it to do to make it a little bit more sci-fi-y. I really like this. I'm going to start doing this on all my bases now. Just have like a little animated uh, aerial dish, satellite dish at the top. Just for no reason other than the fact it looks pretty cool. I think it looks, I think it adds a nice little visual flair to the base. And there is the base there. Like I say, we should probably sort out the uh, the insanely bright red light. So I'll just uh, quickly tweak up, tweak out, tweak, just tweak the action groups. Uh, to uh, there, there we are. There we are. It's all sorted. So there's the base, and it does look, I think it looks kind of cool. 
I was curious to see how it would look, you know, with a big spindly tower with no obvious landing legs. And I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. And it was well worth the, uh, the couple of hours I spent doing this mission. And I hope this was a well, this was a 15 minutes of your time well spent. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, leave that little like. Always very much appreciated. If you want to join any of my social media, you can. And I guess I should, uh, well, there's a, there's a view of the crow's nest. And, the, you know, the, the base, the basey part of the base. And that's it. Yep. So here is a scrolling list of my Patreons and YouTube channel members. Always very much appreciated. If you want to join their magnificent ranks, you can do so either by clicking the join button below the video or following the Patreon link on screen or in the description. There's two more videos from my channel on screen that YouTube thinks you'll like. Hopefully they're good picks. And yes, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions for your future Kerbal uh, Space Program missions, I'd love to hear them. But other than that, thank you for watching.